Bob of a single dash from the Midwest, we can talk about it. Bob of a single dash from the Midwest, we can talk about it. Bob of a single dash from the Midwest, we can talk about it. Or we can get gully, I'll size up your body and put some white chalk around it. Welcome to the Single Dads of the Midwest, episode 35. Today we're going to talk about a very popular topic in pop culture sort of around the world, which is meditation. I'm joined by the amazing Yasmin to discuss her experiences and also teaching uh, meditation uh, to a lot of different people. I know she knows Sheldon, who keeps this podcast alive through Google. But uh, without further ado, Yasmin, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Yasmin. I live in London. I happen to be a Googler working with Sheldon, and this is how I got introduced to this podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, my day job, I'm a technical program manager at Google. I'm currently working at um, Google Search App. And 20 person project, I'm teaching meditation, mindfulness, and coach Googlers. Um, and I'm happy to talk about meditation in this session. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for, for coming on. And I guess we could get started with kind of the obvious question, how did you get started with meditation in your own life? Um, in my case, um, probably was a bit special for me. Um, it was a calling for me. Uh, my inner voice was telling me that, um, try it out, there is something in it for you. And I listened to that voice and I feel very lucky that I did it. And um, at the beginning, it, I was just curious, and then it became something um, necessary to my everyday routine. Um, it, it actually saved, I should say, it saved my life. Um, and it brought so much meaning. It took my life to a deeper level. Uh, it made me a more uh, conscious person. I'm more aware in everything, like in my relationships. Um, in my career, in my decisions. Um, and the benefits were so profound that I decided to share with others. And that's uh, how I ended up teaching meditation. Awesome. Before we get on to the next question, I just kind of want to touch upon, you said it mentioned that it saved your life. Uh, would you care to yes. elaborate more on that? Definitely. Um, I want to start quickly with an intro about um, us and our thinking process. Uh, based on science, um, above 90% uh, of our thoughts are repeated thoughts. And from these thoughts, 80 plus percent are negative thoughts. And this is because um, it's in our evolution. You know, we tend to live in a very unsafe environment in caves with wild animals around, um, resources were limited, we had to fight with each other. You know, it wasn't like today. Um, and our ancestors, the ones um, who survived, they are the ones with the most negative thoughts. So they were the most conscious one and they would consider they were very pessimistic. And so this negativity is our bias in our thinking process. Um, so um, we cannot stop negative thought. This is in our evolution. But there is something we can do about it, and this is the decision to attend to them or not. Uh, so attention is everything. So um, sometimes I look back and I realize, what happened to me? Uh, meditation changed my life. What really happened? What did it really change in my life? It actually helped me to do attention training. I'm consciously choosing my positive thoughts and ignoring my negative thinking. And that solved everything for me. So they say where you put your attention at the energy flows and energy attracts like energy. So basically you put your attention in positivity, you become more positive, it becomes in your energy and your positive energy attracts more positive energy around. So you get affected internally and externally, inside out. So which, which means um, better relationships, better career, um, more connection, more kindness around, sense of uh, unity, win-win um, for everyone, and uh, even better bank account. Like everything gets affected uh, from the small thing to the bigger things. And then values 
those up and then you try to align with your values because you're more conscious. Um, so I would say um, the fact that it, you can be aware of your thoughts and you can choose them, um, that's the key to everything. That's the key to joy. Uh, wondering mind is, an, is the unhappy mind. So when you control your mind, when you do attention training, and meditation is nothing but attention training. Uh, it also um, brought me to the point that after a while you observe your thoughts, you realize, okay, I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my feelings, I'm not my emotions. So you end up with this question that then, who am I? Who am I really? When I remove everything else, when I'm more conscious and more aware of my internal world. So... Um, in that sense, um, what remains after removing everything, what really remains is love, is grace, is light, connection, unity, gratefulness, understanding. So it takes you to the far deeper meaning. It's um, beyond like relaxa relaxation or just being at peace or feeling grounded is far more good. So for me, that's why it was a real life changing event when I got introduced to meditation. No, that makes a lot of sense. I, I've kind of going through my own spiritual journey this year, corporation of like meditation aspects, but then also like where are those limiting beliefs coming from? Like just awareness to thoughts. And then there's kind of this idea in psychology of the shadow and reincorporating the shadow. So I, I can definitely relate to a lot of that. I think definitely the, the phrase, you are not your thoughts is like a pretty, a pretty big one. And just kind of being aware and allowing a sense of separation is pretty big. And, and that goes to kind of the next question is like, what are the common misconceptions people have about meditation? Because I know for me, when I first years ago tried it it was sort of this idea of like try to block out everything and it became very frustrating and then later I learned it, it, you just let the thoughts be like you're not trying to stop anything you just kind of um anything that comes up is fine and that was like a game changer for me uh, I'm curious like I'm sure you've seen a lot of examples of this as, as you've teached it what are the common misconceptions and how do people over overcome those Definitely, you cannot stop million years of evolution, uh, stopping your thinking process. Uh, one of the misconceptions is meditation is about clearing your mind, but that's not true. It's about giving something to your mind to focus on, and that thing can be anything. It can be your breath, uh, it can be an image, they call it visualization techniques, um, it can be a word, repeating a word, it is called mantra, and so on. So, um, and what happens normally is that uh, monkey mind, this wandering mind jumps everywhere. The key to the practice is, it's okay to be distracted and you are actually getting distracted, no exception to anyone, even to the monks practicing this for many years. So um, the key to the practice is as soon as you find out you're distracted, bring back the attention to the object of focus. And we do these several times, even thousand times in a minute, it's okay. So this back and forth uh, between wandering and focusing is actually um, activation and deactivation of different parts of the brain. This is the neuroscience behind it. So when you focus, your prefrontal cortex gets activated. When the mind wanders, the back of the different parts of the brain in the back gets activated. So this back and forth, uh, it actually like going to the gym and work on your brain muscles. Uh, this is when the benefits start showing up. The other uh, misconception is that like um, to find a peace, uh, do meditation. I'm telling you, it's not easy to face negative thoughts. Definitely not easy. Uh, I was curious for a while, why am I procrastinating so much when it comes to meditation? So I'd rather do everything but not meditation. This is because it's hard to sit down and you face with all the worries and all the stress and all the fears and choose not to attend them and choose to ignore them. This is not easy, definitely. 
So um, it may even mm, bother your peace for a while, but if you do it consciously, repeatedly with consistency, yes, at the end, you take the control of your mind rather than your mind control. Um, another thing uh, which I hear a lot is good for sleeping. Definitely it's good for sleeping. But I guess saying that is just um, um, decreasing the value of, underestimating the value of meditation. Because meditation brings consciousness. It makes you awake. You wake up, basically, in the real world rather than being asleep. So, of course, when you get more peaceful and relaxed, you sleep better. But at the end of the day, it brings more consciousness, uh, more awareness to your everyday life. These are some of the misconceptions about it. Uh, that makes a, a lot of sense. And I know you mentioned, you just mentioned the success in your own life with meditation, but now as a teacher, have you seen the benefits or like successes uh, with people that you've taught? Like what have been some of the success stories in your practices? Um, the success stories are countless. Uh, you know, um, everything behind anxiety, depression, addiction, imposter syndrome, lack of self-confidence, jealousy, competition, anger, fear, anything behind these, it's just, it starts with a thought. And then a thought repeatedly changes to, the, to a belief. So with meditation, we can actually address all of these issues. Any cons um, compulsive thought that um, doesn't serve us can be ignored, can be you know, like identified and then ignored through the mindfulness process. So um, people ask me, can I um, address my anxiety? Like, if, um, Unless there is a chemical imbalance in your mind because of a side effect of a drug or something, um, but if it's the the main cause of it is some thoughts, definitely with meditation you can solve these issues. And to take it from sort of what you've done to something, maybe listeners to this who have maybe tried meditation or never tried meditation and want to get better or continue. What are the ways, simple ways people can incorporate meditation in their everyday lives? Um, there are two main ways to bring meditation to your everyday life. Um, first way, which exactly I can use the metaphor of going to the gym, like imagine you want to have a stronger body. What do you do? Um, you go to the gym like three times a week, um, two hours or one hour and a half. Um, you start with a trainer and then you go on your own. The same way with meditation. Uh, you sit on a mat or on a chair and um, try to meditate for 10, 15, 20 minutes, as much as you can. And you do it regularly. You put it in your routine like two, three times a week. The, the more, the better. This is one way. Um, the other way is when you decide um, to take the stairs instead of elevator or um, part of your commute become, become walking or biking. So everyday life. So I would say meditating um, on your walking, meditating on your cooking, they call it mindful cooking. Um, a conversation can be meditated, like mindful conversation, mindful listening. Um, also, to your, be attentive to your body. What do I feel in my body? What emotions I'm going through? What thoughts are coming? Observing my thoughts. So we can find um, small activities during the day, like brushing your teeth, taking a shower, for example. Is, it can be very meditative because there's so much happening in a shower, like the water, the smell, um, you know, um, the touch of the water, like... Um, body movements, uh, feeling refreshed, you know. So um, this is some examples that you can um, follow. There is also, um, and both are necessary, going to the gym and taking the stairs and also eating healthy, you know. So um, the same way for training your mind, uh, you need to sit down, you need to 
and then also in, integrate it into our daily activities like mindful eating, mind, mindful cooking, mindful walking, mindful conversations, mindful listening. I said like taking the shower, there was a lot of triggers like the water, the sound, uh, the smell. So um, yeah, we can basically be fully present to the activity we are um, doing during the day. There is also one um, mindful activity uh, beside meditation, which is very helpful, and that's journaling. Uh, we can talk about journaling forever, but just <laughs> a quick intro is that uh, when you write down your thoughts, uh, first of all, you slow down uh, the thinking process, so it gives you some time to process it. You find out the repetitive thoughts, you find out the negative thoughts, and after a while, again, you become conscious and aware which thought you want to ignore and which one you want to choose, which one is serving you and which one is not serving you. So it's like therapy with paper. It's also a mindful activity. The best thing to do is do meditation for 10, 20 minutes and then do journaling for like 10, 15 minutes afterward to see what comes up for you after your practice. And going along with that, like, I think, especially you, you mentioned doing activities more mindfully. So outside of an actual um, set time for meditation or journaling, which is, I think, very important and things I try to do, though, maybe not as consistently. Um, how do people overcome the like, I'm not or I'm too busy excuse. So is it doing those things, like you said, being more mindful than just the daily activities like walking, eating, showering, etc.? cetera? Um. They say um, meditate half an hour a day. Unless you're too busy, then you need to meditate an hour. So, <laughs> which means um, I'm too busy. Um, usually, um, busyness comes with multitasking, not being present, not being dis distracted, and not being focused. Um, imagine how much time and energy we waste on the thoughts which are not serving us. Um, if we save that time, we definitely find time for the activities we want to be doing. So meditation basically um, helps you save the time and energy for your day. If you're very busy, especially if busy and stressed, meditation can serve you to be on top of your schedule, to be more mindful and to be more focused with the activity at hand. So if you're more busy, the more meditation you serve you more. It makes a lot of sense. I feel like we have a good groundwork on meditation. Um, are there any other thoughts you want to leave in terms of uh, just maybe your personal experiences, teaching, things you've seen from students, or just general thoughts on meditation? Um, I guess one thing I like to talk about is uh, the present moment um, meditation. Meditation is a tool to bring us to the present moment, which is truly really a present. Um, and why is that? When you're fully present, when you're uh, fully here and now, there is um, no space for fear for future, no space for regret or shame from the past. And there is no space for negativity for things which are not serving you. So one of the, I would say, other benefits of meditation is bringing you to this present moment, which is truly a present. So um, the benefits are profound and um, definitely um, it's um, easy to talk about them. Um, but to really get them, this is an experiential thing. You need to practice on your own and experiment on your own and get to your benefits yourself, to, be, to take it as a motivation. Um, starting meditation is challenging, as I said, because you're facing your negativity a lot. Um, you may think that, oh, I cannot do this right. I cannot be focused. You may feel guilty, you may feel shame may feel angry, why I cannot be present. But when you pass that level, if you be consistent and patient with that level, it takes you to the point that 
you become in the um, in the control seat of your thoughts, and then the thoughts can serve you rather than uh, you work for your mind. Um, so probably I'd like to close with the idea of being patient. Try it out. Um, be patient and consistent, and um, find a way to um, get motivated from the benefits you see from it every day. And before we conclude, are there free resources that we can link that you've found helpful in your experiences that maybe people can use? Um, there are unlimited resources out there. Um, and everyone uh, is different. Um, so uh, I know, for example, Headspace app, they have um, a free trial, like 10 sessions that you can start with. Um, you can try YouTube. There are tons of resources out there, like small videos, like recordings. Um, I know even Alex or um, probably Google Assistant, they have short version of meditation, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And these days, there are many teachers out there. They're happy to help you. Um, and um, yeah, so just look it up. Google it. Uh, there are tons of resources out there. Thank you so much. I feel like we learned a lot about meditation today. And I, I definitely agree that the benefits are pretty, pretty profound. So um, it's a great tool. And I think it's like an interesting mix as I'm learning both sort of the spiritual aspect, but also like the scientific aspect. There's sort of this uh, balance there. But yeah, thank you so much again. Yasmin for for coming on and thank you for for teaching people about this because I think that's that's super helpful it's pretty cool that an organization like Google um, kind of puts the resources for that so hopefully people can start it more and more people can kind of incorporate it into their lives but yeah thank you once again for having me and uh, your time um, wish you all the best uh, please let me know if I can help in any ways regarding meditation Definitely. It's uh, my passion. It's uh, something very close to my heart. Thank you. Will do. Thank you so much again.